Imawari has been confirmed to have tailed Beast Chakra. Does this mean that Kurama is back? Yes, you heard it right. Himawari might have actually been a Jinchuriki this entire time. We are finally here with the latest details for Boruto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 8, where Mitsuki is coming to terms with his emotions and the Shinju have finally invaded Konoha, only to reveal a shocking flaw of the Hidden Leaf's sensory unit. Hey everyone, AJ Anime here, and we have plenty of things to go over in this new chapter, so make sure you stay until the end. The cover of this chapter is none other than Jura, with the title Trivial Matters. Before we begin, just look at Jura, posing as a complete menace, which he really is. So on the first page, we see Ada using her Senragon to listen in on Boruto and Mitsuki as Boruto confirms himself to be Mitsuki's son, referring to the previous chapter, and tells him to find him whenever he's ready. Ada is stuck in a trance as she realizes she chose the wrong Otsuki with Kawaki and says that Boruto is just too cool. After that, we see Ada and Kawaki talking to each other, where Kawaki snaps her out of her trance, telling her to find Mitsuki. Remember, Kawaki is still on fraud allegations from getting knocked out by Mitsuki's snake in Chapter 6, so he's definitely pissed. But he doesn't care for Mitsuki right now as he wants to go kill Boruto once and for all. Ada then says, please wait a little longer, as she is trying to stall for more time for Boruto to escape. That's when Delta popped up checking Kawaki's attitude towards Ada, saying, Hey Kawaki, what's wrong with the bossy attitude towards Ada? It's really pissing me off. To which he dismissed and told her he doesn't care what she thinks and she can go piss off somewhere else. And then we have Damon there just listening to the conversation without saying a word. So I do find it weird that he's allowing Kawaki to speak like this because we all know Damon doesn't play when it comes to his sister. We've seen him threaten Kawaki and others before when it came to Ada, telling them that he would kill anyone who threatens her. But ever since part two, he seems to be more reserved, allowing Kawaki to do what he feels like doing. So I'm not sure if this is because Kawaki is now stronger than Damon, and that's why he's cautious, or if it's more because Damon has matured. Nah, there's no way Kawaki is stronger than Damon. He's been kicking his butt since part one, and Kawaki is on serious fraud watch right now, so Damon is probably just minding his own business as long as Ada is physically safe. We then see Ada finally revealing Boruto's location, and both Kawaki and Delta flew away to find him. Now this next part is interesting, because Delta says to Kawaki that he needs to control his actions, because if Ada gets tired of him, she'll kill him without hesitation. And Kawaki then replies, saying that once I've done what needs to be done, you don't need to do anything, because by that time, I'll be gone anyway. We know that Kawaki wants to get rid of everything that threatens Naruto's life, and that includes slaughtering every Otsuki alive. He's already stated multiple times that he is willing to die with no resistance as long as he completes his goal, so hearing Kawaki tell Delta that he'll be gone anyway confirms that his motive is the same. In the next page, we see a claw grime running in the woods, but we don't know where it's heading just yet. Shikimaru continues talking to Boruto, and this pretty much is just Boruto explaining what we already know about the Ten Tails, like how the transformation process of turning into a divine tree has already begun, and how the Shinju are evolving into their own conscious selves. Shikimaru thinks this means the end of the planet is near, but Boruto confirms that the Shinju still need to consume himself or Kawaki to evolve into a complete divine tree, so at this point, the Shinju aren't fully divine trees. They're like halfway there. But once they consume an Otsuki, a chakra fruit will be produced, and that will be the end of life on Earth. Shikimaru continues to question Boruto, as he asks about the status of several other ninja that were eaten by claw grimes, including Moegi, who we know turned into a Shinju named Matsuri. Boruto then reveals that the claw grimes use the chakra of whoever they devoured in order to stay alive, but he doesn't know their true motive. This prompts Shikimaru to ask how much Boruto really knows, as he seems to be the only one knowing the full scope of what is happening right now. Next, we have the sensory team reaching out to Shikimaru, saying, Lord Eighth, we have an incoming transmission from Kawaki. Shall I connect you? But Shikimaru stops and checks in with Ino first to ask if there were any concerns about their conversation being overheard, to which Ino replies, each transmission is independent and separate. There's no issue in this case. Only you can hear both of them. So that's when Shikimaru connected with Kawaki as well. Kawaki then went on to explain that Ada has located Boruto's whereabouts. It's in the south of the village, not too far away. Shikimaru then pretended to not know that Boruto was at the location, so he asked what a guy like Boruto could be doing in that place. Kawaki then replied, saying, Who knows, but Delta is launching a surprise attack from above. After that, I'll get him from behind. 
Shikimaru then says, Calm down, Kawaki, don't rush, as Boruto is now quite experienced, so wait for backup to arrive. But of course, Kawaki ignores this and goes after Boruto anyway. And as we know, Boruto is listening to the conversation over the comms, and he then says to Shikimaru, See you later, I'll contact you again. And that is when he used Flying Thunder God to leave the village. Now, just as this happened, Kawaki did arrive at the location, but Boruto's presence was gone. He couldn't sense him, so Kawaki is literally flabbergasted as he didn't sense him before. So that means that Boruto also didn't sense him. So how did Boruto disappear? The way Kawaki's expressions are, it implies that Kawaki is suspecting Shikimaru in this chapter, but we honestly don't know for sure. Next, we get an interesting dialogue between Mitsuki and Ada as he finally returned to their temporary home. Ada starts off by saying she couldn't believe Mitsuki knocked Kawaki unconscious, to which Mitsuki asks if he was mad at him. As the conversation continues, Damon asks Mitsuki if he felt any grief from saying how Kawaki being angry at him would be a waste of his time, to which Mitsuki starts to challenge what he thought before his encounter with Boruto compared to his current feelings, as he doesn't really know what to think anymore. He continues on explaining how he never knew what love felt like until he met Ada, even though he knows it's a false emotion due to her ability of omnipotence, but nonetheless, he calls it a wonderful feeling to have. Mitsuki says that he didn't know himself, and that he didn't care about most things including himself as long as his son was still there to shine on him, but that was wrong all along. He realized that above anything else, he cannot support himself on his own, and that he will lose sight of what matters most to him, including what the son means to him. This is a huge development for Mitsuki, as the doubts about his life were finally confirmed. Boruto was someone that supported and recognized Mitsuki, giving off this radiant energy like a sun would, while Kawaki was cold and dark like the moon, thus leading him down the path he thought was right, since the brothers' lives were switched. But with this new realization thanks to Boruto, Mitsuki realizes that Kawaki was never his son. Now, moving back to the conversation, things continue to get interesting, as Mitsuki claims that he and Ada are similar in how they love. They discuss love as this blinding emotion that doesn't need a reason to exist for someone, as Mitsuki claims that Ada doesn't know the reason why she loves Kawaki, to which she says thinking about him makes her heart pound and that the reasoning behind it doesn't matter. Ada says that Mitsuki wouldn't understand how she feels because he is forced to fake love thanks to her ability which he agrees with, but he does admit to being scared of losing his actual son. The conversation ends with Ada saying she wants to have a good, long talk with Boruto. I mean, this man has only been around for eight chapters, and he has all the girl's emotions in shambles. And you can have my heart in shambles by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Now, it's time for the main part, where Jura invades the village with Sasuke's clone. Yes, you heard it right. It's about damn time. The Shinju used the black box to teleport to the Hidden Leaf Village through the claw grime we saw running through the forest earlier. While Ino was asking Shikimaru if he believed Boruto's story, the sensory team interrupted, saying, Lord Aeth, two intruders are near the main gate. The sensory team tried to identify the person by matching the chakra data, and one turned out to be negative, while the other was of Sasuke Uchiha confirming that the Shinju would be able to infiltrate the village easily using the chakra signature of the person they devoured. Sarada also seemed to pick up on Sasuke's chakra signature as she turned around confused. Hidari asks where Uzumaki Naruto is, to which Juro replies, saying that I don't know his whereabouts, but I do know one thing, and that's when the villagers pop up, saying, don't move, if you take even one more step, I'll consider you an enemy. They were asking about their purpose of intruding, and that's when Jura used wood style to pop up some spikes from the ground to kill every single one of them. That's right, in a cold panel, every one of them was made into a donut. By the way, I did find it interesting that these were just random ninjas and not anyone from the original series. Like, none of the Konoha 12 or Kakashi. They're just non-existent. But it could be that they don't want to kill those characters or introduce them yet, so the writer is just writing it in a way where he doesn't need to bring them in as the village is being invaded once again. Anyway, let's get back to the topic, where Shikimaru follows the procedure of prioritizing the evacuation of civilians. As Shikimaru was following the procedure, Ada interrupted him, saying, She knows the intruders, and it's the Ten Tails, and somehow they have self-awareness. Switching to Jura, 
where he and Hidari walk into a bookstore, Jura says that they will have some unexpected encounters, when suddenly, Sasuke's clone Hidari asks Jura if Naruto is there, to which Jura is confused by the question. While he was saying this, Kawaki came out of nowhere and started attacking Hidari, but Hidari was able to dodge his first attack with the rods, which shows that Hidari is pretty fast. But then Kawaki used a follow-up kick and was able to kick Hidari away. So now, we finally have Kawaki face to face with Jura, and Jura tells Kawaki not to cause a mess in front of the store as he will damage the treasure trove. To clarify, he's referring to the books within the store because he seems to be obsessed with knowledge. Okay, coming back to the topic. We then see Jura trying to capture Kawaki using wood, but Kawaki was able to shrink thanks to his dojutsu. And he then tried to stab Jura using his transformed hand, but Jura was able to react to him and just blasted off his arm with a single punch. He then looked at Kawaki and said, I won't kill you yet. Then he slapped him across the face with a single punch that sent him flying across the village into a water tank. So it appears that Jura is just way stronger than Kawaki at this point. And keep in mind, Kawaki had his karma seal activated during their exchange. This man Kawaki continues to get disrespected chapter after chapter, and at this point, I just wonder what power-up he will receive to even match Boruto in his base form. It then seems like Jura was able to sense Naruto for a brief moment, because he's like, uh, is that Naruto? He then said that he's a Jinchuriki hosting a tailed beast just like me. In the incarnation of the same tailed beast, I can sense the chakra of the tailed beast within him. So what Jura is sensing isn't Naruto's chakra, but the tailed beast chakra. Now, in my opinion, I think he's referring to Kurama here, but there's no proof. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Next, we see Sarada by herself, and Himawari, Shikadai, and the rest of his squad running towards the Shinju as Sarada wonders why they came to Konoha in the first place, and Shikadai tells his team not to hesitate once they run into the intruders. Suddenly, Jura drops down in front of them, sensing the tailed beast chakra. Jura is now shocked because the tailed beast chakra he is sensing is coming from none other than Himawari. With this, Chapter 8 is finished with a crazy cliffhanger. And that's it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think of this chapter, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos. We will continue to drop monthly Boruto chapter reviews, so let us know what else you'd like to see us cover. See you next time!